All right, guys, so today we are going to be installing these true two and a half inch coil spacers on my Jeep Wrangler. I recently installed the Meta Cloak three and a half inch lift. And if you guys um, want to check that video out, I will put a link right here for you guys. The reason why I'm adding additional two and a half inch lift is one, because I don't want to buy another uh, spring lift kit. And these are expensive, right? And so since I already have all, all that on here, um, that's built for a higher lift. When I did the three and a half inch coil lift, there's a couple of issues that I ran into. One, when I bought these Metacloak shocks, uh, I purchased a long er. So there's a long, you know, travel shocks. Then there's a long er travel shock, and that's what I got is the long er travel shock. And when I lowered my the lift, um, it didn't really give me a whole lot of dampening room as it wants to, you know, as the shock compresses. I only had maybe that much room left. So I felt like it wasn't really performing ideally to where it should be. So that's one reason why I'm adding additional two and a half inch lift uh, to on top of my coil. So that, so three and a half, two and a half, what is that, about a six? It's actually gonna be a little below six because once you take your isolators off and this is gonna replace the isolator, it's gonna go down a half inch. But regardless, I want a little higher lift because uh, I want to be able to clear a little bit more stuff as I'm going through Rubicon and other trails. And uh, after I put my three and a half on there through Rubicon, I was dragging quite a bit. Um, I think primarily it's because I carry a lot of tools with me when I'm off-roading. So I got my all my recovery gears, all my tools, plus a few spare parts and all that adds up to probably around 500 pounds. And so when I'm going through Rubicon or on a trail, it really sat it really sat around two and a half inch lift kind of a feel it sagged down quite a bit and primarily because these coils they are soft but they're really good because they also have a really long down travel uh, with the long with the shock combination it's really a good combo so i'm adding this two and a half on here is to offset all the weight that i'm you know that I take with me on a trail and this is going to be a really cheap an easy way to you know give your truck additional few inches of lift now i'm curious about if this will affect the quality of the ride once i put it on here i don't foresee that it will but if you guys are wanting to do this particular it's called true two and a half inch lift um, i will put a link down below where i bought this on amazon it's under 90 bucks it's like 89 dollars and 95 cents and you get a two free day shipping um, but one thing that I do want to note on here, because I already did the front and the, the passenger side rear, this is a real pain in the butt. I would seriously consider taking this to a shop to do this, only because these shocks, these, well, first of all, these, these, uh, the coils are long in itself, and they're super long. Then when you add this on two and a half, two and a half inch lift uh, spacer, it's really hard to take the... <coughs> spring and the lift and the and the, um, the spacer and the, and the spring and get it up in there and you're, you're just really fighting the clearance issue so take it to a shop where they got a lift and they can really drop the whole axle down to let a drip would be ideal right now i had to go rent i had to go rent a spring compressor uh, this is the only way that I was able to figure out how to do this in my garage. Now there's some pros and cons to these things. So if you guys want to go check out how to use these things, go out. There's a lot of videos out, already out there on YouTube on how to use these things. Just be mindful that if you are going to choose to use this, be extremely careful and you are torquing these things down or compressing the, the springs equally on both sides, okay? Um, so as I'm doing this, I'm gonna just show you some little blips of quick video here and there. Me uh, kind of showing you the struggles that I'm going through. And I think at the end of the video, you guys will be like, okay, yeah, I think Brian's right. I'm gonna just take it to shop. And I can't imagine it's gonna cost that much for a shop to do this, honestly, but you know, I'm a do it yourself first. I really believe in doing things on your own so that if something does break, uh, you'll just know, you'll know how to fix it and you'll learn how to you know, work on your, your Jeep as well. With that being said, it really does look good on this Jeep with that two inch lift. So now I'm at three and a half, four and a half, five and a half, uh, almost six inches, okay? And the Jeep looks really good. Exactly what, what, I was, what I was hoping for with the three and a half inch lift. I didn't really like that stance that it had. It looked like, 
it's kind of like a betweener. It wasn't low, but it wasn't high. Um, and it just kind of looked funny. So this additional two and a half, so total about six inches, is really, the I think, one of the, the best look, um, the way that Jeep sits on the ground. Um, not only that, you're gonna get a lot more clearance, for sure. All right, so the reason why I'm pulling the tape measure is because I'm measuring the, the distance I have from top and bottom so that I can compress the, the coil appropriately so that I can just slide it right in. So that's a really good tip for you guys. And lastly, as you're setting the spring and the spacer up into to the position, I just want to make sure that uh, everything is set properly and everything is square, balanced, uh, everything looks copacetic, and that spring is setting right in the little groove on that spacer um, before you, you know, jack it up to add a little bit of tension. So before you get to this point, just make sure that the spring and everything is lined up correctly. And as you're decompressing the coil, it's really important here that you release the tension equally on both sides because you gotta remember this thing is still loaded with a lot of power and it's basically you know loaded gun. So you be very careful that you uh, you know release it equally on both sides. Let me get a measurement for you guys. So when we started this project, before we were at 45 inches tall from the top of my fender wall right here to the ground. So my new measurement. Here, let me. Yeah. Is we are looking at exactly well, just above 47, maybe 47 and a quarter. Okay, so that's where we're at, 47 and a quarter inch. All right, well, so far, the on-road mannerism is really good. It drives pretty darn good. Uh, I feel hardly anything different other than it feels a little softer, and I think that, that's just because my shocks are longer now because I went up, and now it's at the appropriate shock length. So with that being said, if you guys are interested in doing this particular project on your guys' um, Jeep, I think it's well worth the money especially for under 90 bucks you just can't get a lift for that price um and it's a screaming deal and i will leave that link down below to the amazon link where you can buy this and if you guys use that link to purchase it it will definitely help out the wagon family and as it will help you guys out so thanks for watching hope this was helpful helping you decide whether or not you want to do this or not so anyways i'm brian with the four by two wagon family We'll see you guys in the next video and have a wonderful day. God bless.